How'd you like to see that guy in the midnight green? Now, here's the scene from last night as Howie Roseman and Doug Peterson made wide receiver Jalen Rager an eagle with the 21st pick in the NFL draft. And welcome to Eagles Draft Central, presented by Dietz and Watson, Amy Campbell, and Fran Duffy, breaking it down for you as always. We've got a great show for you. We're going to hear from Gary Patterson, Jalen Rager's college coach. We're going to hear from Rager himself and, of course, Doug Peterson about the new Eagle. But, Fran, as you've had a night to sleep on it, how excited are you about this Jalen Rager selection by the Eagles? You know, we were excited last night, and I didn't think I was going to be any more excited, but I woke up this morning thinking about just how he's going to fit in this Eagles offense. And actually, you know, you mentioned I, I talked with uh, TCU head coach Gary Patterson, and one of the things I asked him was fitting into an offense that's got these tight ends, right, with Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard. You get those two on the field with Jalen Rager on one side and Deshaun Jackson on the other. The problems that will cause NFL defenses on a weekly basis – that's got me excited. So you want to make sure you tune into that answer a little bit later in the show. Of course, we've got exciting stuff coming up in this show. But remember, everyone, you can see all of it all throughout the draft process on PhiladelphiaEagles.com, on our mobile app, our social channels, exclusive stuff, instant reaction, live analysis that you won't get anywhere else. So be sure to stay with us throughout the whole weekend. And I want to start this show off with a heartfelt thank you to Dietz and Watson, who surprised us with tons of food for this draft process. I got an exciting delivery today. Fran, what did they send you? Well, you know, I was sitting upstairs. I was playing with my son. It was you know, right around lunchtime. There's a knock on the door, and the folks over at uh, Deli on 4th, over on Conshohocken, they dropped off, courtesy of Dietz and Watson, a bunch of hoagies, a bunch of salads. We are, our, our fridge is filled at this point now. And, you know, really, one of the things I miss most about having the draft at the NovaCare Complex is the job that Tim Lopez, you know, the line chef there, everybody over at the Eagles Cafeteria, what they do with the food spread. We tried to replicate a little bit of that here. It's my wife's birthday today. Shout out to my beautiful wife, Meg. And, you know, we were now we are set for the next couple of days here in the Duffy House, courtesy of Dietz and Watson. Uh, they sent me a box with 10 different types of cheeses in it, and my excitement could not have been any higher. The way to my heart is cheese. 10 different types of cheeses along with swoop spread, their new wasabi mustard sauce. Dietz and Watson, I am so pumped to be eating this throughout the week. All right, let's get into it for tonight. A reminder, the Eagles picks for day number two in round two, pick number 53. Round three, pick number 103. That's as it stands right now. But of course, all of that could change. That's a part of what makes this so exciting. Uh, let's go now to bring in our Eagles insider, Dave Spadaro. And Dave, I know Fran and I were just discussing the delicious things that Dietz and Watson sent us. I heard you got some stuff too. What'd you get? <laughs> I sure did, Amy. I got a little knock on the door just before lunch on Friday today and went down and big box of hoagies and salads. And I thanked Dietz and Watson. I've already polished off one hoagie. I'm going to polish off another one before the Eagles pick in the second round. And I'm going to gain my usual 10 pounds during draft weekend, and I'm very happy to do so. They are terrific and delicious. There's nothing better than a Deaton Watson hoagie. Yeah, they're taking great care of us. So, Dave, I know this is a much different draft for everyone. You're normally in the war room. You're, you're getting the vibe. You're getting the inside access. And being at home, that hasn't stopped you at all with your inside access. You've been able to talk to everyone, same as always, which is so impressive to all of us. But as the Eagles insider, what are some of your big takeaways from night number one? Well, with Jalen Rager, a very confident young man who, during a Zoom teleconference Today, with some Eagles season ticket members, uh, one of the fans asked him who he would compare himself to in the NFL, and he used two names, Debo Samuel from the San Francisco 49ers, Tyreek Hill from the Kansas City Chiefs, a combination of those two players. And then I spoke with Doug, P Doug uh, Peterson, and he said, well, if that's the case, and he certainly has similarities, then we've got ourselves one heck of a football player. But this is a kid who, as Doug said, has an edge to him. He's very comfortable in his own skin. He's very confident, and yet he understands that he's got a lot of work to do to reach that highest level in this league. So I'm really excited about what he's shown on tape and very excited about the personality and the level of confidence that he will bring to Philadelphia. 
Dave, with all the people that you've talked to, is there something that you know we haven't heard yet that uh, that you've gleaned? You know, you've talked with Howie Roseman, you've talked with Doug Peterson, you've talked with Jalen, you've talked with so many people behind the scenes. Is there something that maybe we are not privy to yet that you've learned uh, over the last 24 hours? You know, Fred, I think you kind of touch on it here. Uh, is it's the style of what Jalen brings to the Eagles. You know, we've seen in the past how Doug has used, for example, Nelson Aguilar with some inside handoffs. He's tried to get the jet sweep going in this offense. And I think with what Rager brings to the table, you know, he's got that, that burst of energy, that twitch, that, that explosiveness. And, and Doug really went into detail in our interview about the explosiveness and exactly what does explosiveness mean. You'll hear it from Doug. We've got a player here who's got those kinds of abilities. And also, Fran, in the return game, Last year, the Eagles got virtually nothing in the punt return game. The longest punt return from the Eagles in 2019 was 17 yards. Well, in 2018 at TCU, this young fellow, Rager, averaged 20.8 yards per punt return. So an explosive, fast, versatile offensive weapon that we all can't wait to see how he gets worked into the offense this season. All right, Dave, we appreciate your inside perspective, and we will be catching up with you throughout the night. We'll let you go for now. All right, guys. And of course, as we hear more about the excitement of the coaching staff and how they're going to use wide receiver Jalen Rager in Philadelphia, let's now hear from somebody who knows firsthand what it's like to have him in his offense. Fran caught up with his head coach, with his college head coach at TCU, Gary Patterson, to learn more about Jalen Rager. The Eagles are a big 12 personnel offense. You know, Zach Ertz, Dallas Goddard, they love getting those two tight ends on the field. You already have a Deshaun Jackson. You've got a dynamic running back that can do a lot of different things from a versatility standpoint, Miles Sanders. When you have the speed on the field at wide receiver with a Jalen Rager and Deshaun Jackson with those two tight ends, what does that do for those guys? How does that, what kind of problems does that cause for a defense? Well, because people have to put more people in the box and then you get one-on-ones and sometimes you give up, you know, you, you, you get the vertical threat. Somehow you have to be able to get that extra guy down there when people can run the football. And, and that's the problem with the 12 personnel set, the two tight ends, is that when you have guys that are vertical threats and you have to sometimes to do that, you got to put them in one-on-ones, uh, whether it's the speed factor or making a miss on screens and everything else. And you get by the first guy, it's a big play. And so, uh, that's what we do here. Speed is a premium at TCU. It's always been a premium, and Jalen's one of those guys that has that. And you can watch that full interview on PhiladelphiaEagles.com, as always. And now we've heard a lot about Rager. We've talked a lot about Rager. Let's hear from the new Eagle himself. He went one-on-one -on -one with Eagles insider Dave Spadaro. Take a look. I'm Eagles insider Dave Spadaro, and I am joined on the phone by the newest Philadelphia Eagle, the 21st selection in the 2020 NFL Draft, wide receiver Jalen Rager from TCU. Jalen, congratulations. What is the feeling when the Philadelphia Eagles called you and then when Commissioner Dell called out your name? Man, it was just like a sigh of relief, just like, you know, just waiting, <laughs> just anticipating the call and uh, just knowing I'm going to a home, a home, man, like I'm going to Philly, so. You know, you just got to think about the stuff like you went through that you like, man. And it's all ultimately down to that one call and uh, that one team. And it's feeling I'm glad to be an Eagle. Jalen, for Eagles fans who don't know much about you, what can they expect to see from you in 2020 and for many years to come? Just a hard working person who plays his heart out and uh, always does his 111. Jalen, I've read up about your work ethic and the – thing that really struck me was the routine you have with push-ups uh can you yeah. tell people about the way you the attack the push-up man it's just it's just something i've done since i was younger and uh as i got stronger older um i got you know like i said i got stronger so i began to do more and uh i mean i look i feel like i look good so uh i've gotten stronger from it <laughs> and uh it's helped me out so i'm gonna just keep on doing what i'm doing how many a day do you do jalen uh, about seven, 700 to 800 push-ups a day. It's interesting, your versatility and your explosiveness. 
where does that come from? I mean, you can move around to a lot of different positions. Do you think that that helped you get a lot of attention in this draft? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just, just my ability to move wherever. And uh, I'm not a one-dimensional player. And I feel like when you can be used in different spots, it gives you more than 11 people on the field. Jalen, your father played with the Eagles in 2007. Is Monte your father? Is he around? Can, can he join you on this call for just a moment? I'd love to say hello to him. I'm right here, Dave. How you doing? Hey, Monte, what's up? Dave Spadaro, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. What did you tell Jalen about playing in Philadelphia? I just told him it's a city that's going to love their football. They're going to support you. Um, they're they're going to expect you to pay hard. They're going to expect you to give, give their all. But if you do that, they're going to love you. They're going to fight for you. They're going to cheer for you. And they're going to ride or die with you. And then, Jalen, finally here, uh, what do you know about the Eagles and how do you feel that you're going to fit into this thing? Man, I just know it's a, it's a great program, a great city to play in. And, uh, you know, I talked to Carson, I talked to Alshon, uh, and, you know, I, I know those guys are ready to work. And uh, just to be able to learn from Deshaun and Alshon, the older guys, and then when you add me into the offense, it's like you got Miles, then you got Ertz. Like, it's just going to be so dynamic. So it'll just be the dream come true. I'm fully convinced that Dave Spadaro knows everyone in the world. And, of course, you can watch the rest of that interview on PhiladelphiaEagles.com and all of our platforms. And we've got a little bit more for you. We've already heard from Gary Patterson, Jalen Rager's college head coach. Well, what about his new head coach, Doug Peterson? Dave Spadaro caught up with Doug Peterson about his new player and how he's going to fit into the offense in Philadelphia. Welcome, Eagles, everywhere to day two of the 2020 NFL Draft. Eagles insider Dave Spadaro with you. And I'm joined by the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, Doug Peterson, who on Thursday night with the 21st pick overall in this draft, selected from Texas Christian University wide receiver Jalen Rager. Coach, congratulations on the draft pick. And take me through as you watch Jalen play at TCU what you saw and what you put down in your notes as you watched him play. First of all, Dave, we're so excited to have have, have selected Jalen. And the couple of things that kind of stood out for me, number one, right off the bat, was was the explosiveness. When we talk about receivers, we talk about, you know, coming off the ball and releases. We talk about feeling uh, a, a guy's power. And you can really feel his explosive power coming off the ball. And, and then the speed down the field, being able to not only uh, separate and run by guys, but to, to elevate, you know, a 42-inch vertical leap. I mean, this guy – at 5'11", can, can get up and, and elevate with the best of them. You know, that and the ability to, to return kicks, to return punts, being a dual threat return guy also is very intriguing for us. And I think it's important when you evaluate a player for, for its entirety and for his entirety and, you know, take the ball on a jet sweep and, and, then, and then turn into that punt returner or use him out of the backfield. And so this is a guy that's got uh, position flex. He can play inside. He can play outside. Uh, he's played out of the backfield. You can use him on jet sweeps around uh, in, in the in the kicking game, and really a, a receiver that that um, I'm excited about and fit our offense well. Doug, we're about to start the second round of this draft. The Eagles have seven more picks throughout the weekend. What are your thoughts on what's ahead uh, this weekend for the Philadelphia Eagles? You know, this is the first time in uh, you know my my career here as a head coach that we've had this many picks, obviously, and. And uh, I'm excited about that because it's about it's about adding value and it's about adding the talent and the depth at, at a ro- on our roster and and uh, you know and, and getting younger. I mean, we we knew that coming out of last season, one of the oldest rosters in the National Football League, and and uh, you know we needed to add uh, some speed and we did that yesterday in, in the first round. But as we look forward, I mean, there, there's a lot of things can happen. We still got a lot of great players on our board, you know, sort of in these next couple of rounds. Uh, really is where the pieces uh, of your roster begin to take shape. And you really find some some diamonds in the rough, some, you know, some guys that are really going to make your team. They're either going to be uh, complementary pieces to your offense, defense, and special teams, or they're going to be those role players or situational players that, that help you that way too. So, and the other thing is the, the undrafted guys. I mean, you know, we got so many undrafted free agents on our roster, guys that didn't get drafted. And, and uh, we got a lot of those guys, too, on our roster. So I'm excited for those guys as well because they add a lot of value to us at the end of the draft. 
And like all of our content, you can watch that full interview, PhiladelphiaEagles.com, our mobile app, and all of our social platforms. We're going to take a quick break. On the other side, Eagles preseason analyst Ross Tucker joins us to break down some of the big names still on the board in tonight's draft that Eagles fans need to know. Stay with us. Eagles in night two of the 2020 NFL Draft. Visit BudLight.com slash open for takeout to see which bars and restaurants near you are open for takeout and delivery. Now more than ever, we need to serve those who serve us. And as we continue with Eagles Draft Central, we welcome in Eagles preseason analyst Ross Tucker to break down some of the names still on the board that Eagles fans need to know for tonight. Ross, who do you got for us? Well, I'm going to go to wide receiver again. I don't know if the Eagles will take another receiver in the second round, but it wouldn't surprise me if they doubled up at some point in the draft. And if a guy like T. Higgins from Clemson happens to be there when the Eagles pick, I don't think they'll hesitate to think about selecting him. You're talking about a guy with elite size and length who was unbelievably productive the last couple of years at Clemson, over 2,100 yards receiving, 25 touchdowns, 6'4", 216. We know about the track record for Clemson wide receivers recently. DeAndre Hopkins, Sammy Watkins. We know what he can do catching 50-50 balls down the field. You're seeing video of that right now, but I think he's actually more than that. You see him on slants, on posts. He's pretty good after the catch. He's not just a jump ball guy, 50-50 guy, even though he does have unbelievable ball skills. I think he'd be a really good compliment for Jalen Rager in this rookie class. Yeah, I think when you look at, you know, trying to compliment Jalen Rager, I think that that's a very interesting conversation because, you know, you look at Jalen Rager, we talk so much about his versatility and all the different things you can do. I think you can go a number of different ways. Yeah, you can go with a size guy, a jump ball player. You can go with somebody that can line up primarily on the outside. Or if you want to go with a primarily slot receiver because Jalen Rager can win on the outside, you can go that route as well. And that's one of the great things about having a versatile weapon like that in Rager. But going to T. Higgins, this is a guy that I think watching him shades of an A.J. Green type of talent, right? Just that length, that ability to go up and win. He's not a, a plotter on the outside. He can get vertical. He was used that way at Clemson. Certainly a very, very intriguing talent. Yeah, when you talk about T. Higgins, the big thing that everybody says, and both of you have said it, is that length and that size jump ball specialist. This is a guy who, as a junior in high school, was a finalist for Mr. Basketball in Tennessee, so possesses a ton of athleticism. But I love that he comes from a championship program with a championship mentality, and that is always something that I appreciate for prospects coming to the next level, guys who know how to handle their business and know how to win. All right, Fran, let's get to you. Who do you have your eye on tonight? I'm going to go with a guy that I think has a very similar kind of skill set, Denzel Mims, the wide receiver from Baylor. You look at Denzel Mims, this is a guy that got better each and every season on campus. I've watched him for the last couple of years and have gotten a chance to see that development. What really stands out to me about Denzel Mims is his body control, his ball skills. And that's something 
you really can't teach. Some of the best catches you're going to see from this kid along the sideline. It's not just, oh, he's bigger, stronger. He just goes up and wins over people. But the athleticism at the catch point is super, super impressive. He's got outstanding hands. He can run like a deer. A track guy at Tech in a Texas high school. He goes to the combine. He runs in the low 4-4s. Some people had him below 4-4. And that ability to get vertical at that size is certainly going to be very, very intriguing. A guy that works primarily outside the numbers, goes to the senior ball, has a great week. He's a great blocker. I mentioned what he did at the Combine. This is a guy that has helped himself along the way. Again, gotten better every year on film, goes to the Senior Bowl, knocks that out of the park, and then blows up the Combine. And Fran, to your point, he crushed the pre-draft process. He was the best receiver at the Senior Bowl. He also, as you mentioned, had a great Combine 40 time. He's really an impressive size speed guy. When you look at 6'3", 210, running a sub 4'4", and the only knock on him is that his route tree is not that evolved. But that's not really his fault, right? I mean, you can only run the routes in college that they ask you to run. He's got the size and speed ratio that you're looking for. And I love what you said about the fact that he's been getting better every year. You want to draft ascending players, not players that have maxed out their potential. I think that's a great point about that Baylor offense and the limitations that were put on him there and how that shouldn't be held against him because, look, as long as you're continuing to get better and this is a guy who was a star at the Combine, a star at the Senior Bowl, those are great things uh, to say about Denzel Mims. All right, for my pick, guys, I'm going to defense. And uh, I seem to really love these hybrid safety linebacker guys, but I'm going with Jeremy Chin. And it's interesting because in some places he's listed as a safety, some as a linebacker, but the Southern Illinois player – lined up all over the field in college. And I love that he has this sideline to sideline speed, great instincts. He knows how to locate the ball just naturally. Another star of the senior bowl who's been a fast riser. And again, I think he excels in the box as a down safety or a nickel linebacker. I really like those versatile guys on defense as we've seen that position evolve, especially with this Eagles defense and how he might fit in there. Well, and Amy, I love the FCS guys. I got a soft spot in my heart for any FCS guys. And who doesn't want a Saluki on their team? We could all use a Saluki on our team. But the thing that's crazy about Chin is he has a cornerback background. But now he's almost got a linebacker body. That's what people are looking for. You think about some of the linebackers the Eagles have had recently. Nate Gary, Camus Grugier-Hill, they love that safety back. I mean, look how put together that guy is and the production he had at Southern Illinois. At a minimum, he would be a special teams demon who I think could play a number of different roles for the Eagles, including maybe eventually being a starting linebacker. Yeah, he's very similar to Denzel Mims in that he has crushed every aspect of the pre-draft process, jumped out of the gym, ran away from everybody at the Combine, was excellent down at the Senior Bowl. You mentioned that cornerback background. I watched him in one-on-ones down there in Mobile, Ross, and he did not look out of place going one-on-one -on -one against receivers as a 220-pound safety. Over on the Journey of the Draft podcast driven by AAA, We've made the comparison that he's like a day two version of Isaiah Simmons, who went eighth overall to the Arizona Cardinals. So I think when you look at Jeremy Chin, this is a guy with a very, very intriguing skill set. His versatility is certainly something you can hang your hat on. All right, let's get one more name for Eagles fans to watch tonight, Ross. And let's make it another safety. Antoine Winfield Jr., I played with his dad in Buffalo, and he reminds me so much of his dad. The same number, the same unbelievable instincts. They're both 5'9", but incredibly tough, physical, off-the-charts FBI, football intelligence. It seems like he knows what's about to happen before it does seven interceptions and four sacks. You're seeing a couple of those as a safety how do you get that many sacks? It's unbelievable. He can play in the slot. He can play in the box. You see the middle of the field skills to be able to contort his body to get that interception right there. The only knock on him is that he's undersized, but he is powerful. The height didn't bother his dad. I don't think the height would bother him. I don't think the height bothers the Eagles either. 
uh, Ross, I was I thought you were going to knock him because of what he did against the uh, the Nittany Lions this fall. I mean, he was <laughs> outstanding in that game. He had two picks in the first half. Could have had three. Uh, he is a really fun football player. You talk about the instincts. You talk about his ability to play in the post. What I love about him is his toughness and his competitiveness. You know, he'll come downhill and he'll lay a hit on a ball carrier. And if he gets a finger on you, you are going to the ground. He's a very, very reliable tackler. I love Antoine Winfield. This is a guy that I would not bet against, regardless of what you think about his size. And he went to the combine, and he ran 4-4. So any people that questioned his speed, I think he kind of put that to rest. Yeah, very instinctual, and you love to see that NFL pedigree from a a prospect like that. All right, Ross, before we get out of here, I know Fran and I have been uh, eating great today from our friends at Dietz & Watson. Uh, How about yourself? Oh, my gosh, Amy. So anybody knows I love posting press box food (laughs) videos on my social media. I didn't do that tonight because I got an unbelievable package from Dietz & Watson, courtesy of the folks around here at Hoagies in Hummelstown. They have a a place in Lemoyne as well. It's my favorite sub shop around here. And I got to tell you, as much as I love it, Amy, I think my wife might love it more. I mean, I haven't seen her this happy since the quarantine started they brought all these mini hoagies over we've all already had four or five check my social media at ross tucker nfl i already posted a beautiful picture of it we will be eating good all weekend that's incredible i love it look with the dc watson is spoiling us and i am not complaining one bit all right russ i'm sure we will be checking in with you throughout the night we will see you a little bit later and we are going to take a quick break here at eagles draft central stay with us Toyota. Eagles Draft Central presented by Dietz and Watson, proud partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, before we get you out of here as night two begins, let's take one more look at the Eagles picks for uh, night number two in the second round, the 53rd pick, and in round number three, the 103rd pick as it stands right now. Again, all of this could change, which is why we are staying at the ready all night. Fran and I will be live immediately with analysis following all of our selections, whether they're at 53 and 103 or otherwise. And uh, Fran, let me ask you this before we get out of here. What is the biggest question that you're looking to have answered tonight? You know, people ask me that all the time. And I, to me, when I when I look at the draft, okay, especially when you get to day two, you get to day three, it's all about acquiring talent. Because, yeah, we talk about Jalen Rager and his skill set, how he's going to apply to the Eagles in 2020, and that's important. But it's about, with all of these players, it's about how they impact this roster in 2021, 2022, 2023. So while those needs and, you know, answer, we need wide receiver, we need corner, we need this, we need that, it's not necessarily all about this fall. You want to try and acquire the best players possible, the guys that fit your scheme, that fit your culture, that fit your locker room. So that's what really the task is now over the next couple of days is continue to acquire as many good players as possible, find as many that fit everything that you're looking for, and try and get them into the building. 
Oh, it's so exciting. I can't wait to see what ends up happening today. Uh, and of course, we will have all of the analysis instantly after the pick is made. PhiladelphiaEagles.com, our mobile app, all of our social channels. That's also where we will have tons of exclusive content, press conferences with coaches and executives, with uh, Eagles insider Dave Spadaro and the new Eagles as well. And if you're not on the mobile app, go ahead and download that because there's some really fun polls that we'll be having on there throughout this entire draft process. And those are from our friends at NovaCare Rehabilitation. So tons of content that you can't get anywhere else. We have got you all covered for this entire draft process. And with no further ado, let's get the night started. We will see you when the pick is made.